All right, guys, well, we are back in the garage working on the FC. We are on our way to turbocharging it, and the next step is installing the S5 Turbo 2 intake manifolds. Before we can get those installed, however, we do have to modify our S4 TPS so that it works on the S5 throttle body. As far as I know, the throttle body sensors are the same. It's just that the brackets are a little bit different. So we're just gonna fab something up real quick so that we could get our TPS working on our throttle body. All right, so here is the TPS that I pulled off the FC. And as you could see with the NA bracket, it doesn't really align with any of our cams. Um, I know you could probably just swap out this bracket for a turbo one and it probably should work. Um, but I don't know where I could buy that separately. So instead I just bent up some aluminum real quick and we'll just install this so that our TPS rests against this cam right here. And the way that this works is when it's fully depressed, our throttle body is fully closed. And then as you open the throttle, this comes out until it's full throttle. Well, our little modification is complete. As you can see, when the throttle is completely closed, our plunger is all the way depressed. And now we'll open the throttle, and you'll see that the plunger completely comes out when it's almost wide open throttle. So about 60%, I'd say, is when we'll have that wide open throttle reading. But as you can see, this little bracket is doing the trick. So let's move on. Now that we've wrapped up our modification for our TPS sensor, we can move on to the engine bay and start removing the stock intake manifolds. As you can see, we have our stock manifolds off the car. And before we put on our Turbo 2 lower intake manifold, we do have to modify this gasket a little bit. Um, as you can see, there's some material right here that we're just gonna cut away. Then we'll put this on and install the manifold. So our lower intake manifold is installed and now we can get our fuel rail installed. So you can see it installs right here and you may have noticed that the orientation is flipped from our NA fuel rail. So you can see the fuel pressure regulator is on the left side instead of the right. This is where the feed is. So we're just going to have to make this line a little bit longer. But before we do that, we're just going to come over here and install our new aftermarket fuel pressure regulator as well as our fuel pressure gauge. So I do want to mount the regulator somewhere over here, um, but unfortunately at this spot it would be a little bit too high and it would hit the hood. So um, what I am planning to do is kind of clean this area up. I think it was due to be cleaned up anyways. So uh, what I'll do is loom this power cable and uh, clean this area up so I can mount this somewhere over here.
Now we're gonna transfer our secondary fuel injectors to our new fuel rail. All right guys, we're gonna take a time out real quick. Um, in the process of transferring the injectors from the S4 rail to this S5 rail I have, um, originally I just thought that someone added that aftermarket uh, and fit in an FPR. Um, but what I just discovered now is that the bore size has been increased from 11 to 14 millimeter. And it's a pretty common modification from what I understand. Um, but what that means is these top hats that I have right here are not gonna work in this fuel rail. Um, so what I've done is just ordered some new top hats. Hopefully they come in time. Either way, we're gonna proceed to getting other things worked on. Uh, so let's continue. So here is our next dilemma. As you can see, I've roughly put on the UIM as well as placed the throttle body. Thing that you want to know is our throttle cable is right here, um, but on the throttle body itself, the linkage is actually flipped the opposite way. And that's just because on a T2, the throttle cable comes from this side all the way around. Whereas on the S4 NA, you can see it's coming from right there. So what we have to do is just flip that linkage and we'll modify the throttle body a little bit. All right, so first we'll take off this lock nut. Lock washer. Now we'll take off this spring, as well as the cam. This other stopper. And then finally the spacer. Here are all the components we just removed. We have our spacer. We have a little arm that hits the dash pot so that the throttle closes a little bit slower. We have our throttle linkage cam thingy. Then we have another arm, lock washer, and a lock nut. All right, now we're gonna remove this dash pot just so that when we rotate this throttle open, it won't hit. So there's just two Phillips screws holding that in. Now we're gonna get rid of this perch that the springs would clamp onto. Now we could reinstall almost everything back on. So we're gonna start with our spacer. And then we're gonna get our throttle cam on. We don't need these springs anymore, so we'll remove those. And then this arm right here, followed by our lock washer and our lock nut. The last thing that we're gonna do just to clean things up and since we won't have cruise control, is just cut off this cruise control cam right here. So we're just gonna make a cut right there. This thing's looking good. So as you can see now, this cam will rest right here and it's closed right now. And the throttle cable, when it pulls, will open it like so. So as you can see, we have successfully reversed the operation of this aspect over here. Now the only other thing that we're going to have to do is make a little bracket that will hold the cable in place, so probably just some sort of L. Well these injector top hats just came. So I think now our fuel setup should be good to go so we can install this and uh, hopefully everything works out without leaking. And here we are. I think pretty much everything is good to go. We have our primary fuel line going into our rail from our new fuel filter we installed last time. And then that's going into the secondary rail. And the outlet is going into our fuel pressure regulator. And then we have our return hose going back to the tank. Before I do anything else, I am going to test it out by priming the fuel system. Just making sure there's no leaks. All right, well, as you guys heard that, we did not um, go without any issues. As you can see, this fitting right there is leaking. So I'm gonna tighten that up and hopefully that does the trick. 
amazingly the injectors aren't leaking so that's good so uh, I'm gonna try it out and get back to you so after tightening that AND connection as well as that hose clamp everything seems good to go our fuel pressure was a little high so we're gonna have to adjust that fuel pressure regulator but other than that we are in good shape I know this is only the intake side of things so it's not even that big of a deal since we don't have a turbo but it's still so nice seeing some turbo 2 components in this engine bay all right well that's going to be a wrap for today's episode I feel like we got a lot of work done. We pretty much have all of the Turbo 2 components installed except for a turbo. So that will come in the next episode and we're also gonna be running the oil lines and hopefully get a little bit of a head start on the front mount intercooler. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, and subscribe as per usual. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.